Hello grade 10s, in this video we're going to do a very quick activity on determining the number of wavelengths between different points given. We're also going to be calculating amplitude and then finally determining the wavelength of this wave above me over here. So this comes from a past exam paper, so this is good practice for you when it comes to practicing your classwork or studying for tests and exams. If you've missed the video on points in phase or wavelength or anything related to transverse waves, check the link in the description box below for the playlist on waves. Let's jump into this example behind me. So the first question asks me how many wavelengths, in other words, how many waves are there from A to F? Now, remember, finding how many wavelengths there are or how many full complete waves there are, it, it's all got to do with points in phase. So we find a wavelength by taking two successive points in phase, connecting them, and that gives us one wavelength. Okay, so let's start. They want the wave from A to F. So if we start at A, A is over here. A is at the equilibrium position just before we get a trough. I hope, I mean, a crest. I hope that makes sense to you. So just before, as we go up from A, from the equilibrium position upwards, we're almost going to hit a crest, so the peak of the wave. So how many wavelengths are there from A to F? Here's F. That's my finishing point. Let's count the number of waves. So one wavelength would be from this point over here to that point over here. That would be one wavelength. And now I know you might be confused and you might say, ma'am, how is that one wave? How did you get that? How did you know where to stop? Well, remember, it's all about points in phase. This point over here is in phase with this point over here. They are two successive, so one after the other, points in phase. And again, you could be like, ma'am, but how did you know they are in phase? Well, it's all got to do with the position on the wave. So look, this is a crest. I'm just going to call this crest. How I like to think of it uh, is like this. This is a crest. This is a crest. And so on, G is also a crest. And crest to crest, that is one wave. Okay, because crest and crest, they are in phase. But I'm not going crest to crest. I'm going from the point that is just before the crest. So you see, A is just before we head upwards towards a crest. So go to the next crest. What is the point that is just before you reach the crest? It's this one over here. So that is one wavelength. Then the next wave would be starting here. Remember, we need to find how many waves there are from A to F. So start here. Where would one full wavelength be starting here? It would be from just before you get to that crest to here's the next crest. There we go. Just before you get to that crest. So F basically that's a second wave. You can see, I hope you can see that this pink purple wave, that's exactly the same shape. It's identical to this yellow one. That's one wave, the purple pink one, and the yellow one, that's another wave. So therefore, how many waves are there between A and F? There are two wavelengths. There are two wavelengths. Now just be careful, that doesn't mean that the wavelength is two meters. They're asking how many wavelengths are there. Are there one wave? Is there one wave? Is there two waves? Are there three waves? Four, five? Not what is the wavelength? How big is it? What's the distance? How many waves are there basically? So there's a difference in the question. Now, this is a slightly more tricky one. How many wavelengths are there from A to E? Now, immediately you can see that A is at the equilibrium position and E is on a trough. So they weren't, there won't be a full number of wavelengths. It could be one point something, or one and a half, or one and a quarter, or one and three quarters, or two and a half. I hope you understand what I mean. It won't be a full number of wavelengths, because it can't be, because we start in an equilibrium position over here, and we end on a trough. So the best way to do this is to count the number of full waves. And then once we've, you know, reached a certain point, we're going to have to count like halves or quarters. So let me show you. So where would one wave be? Where would one wave end? It would start at A and it would end over there. Remember, this point is not labeled. Ma'am, how did you know that it starts and ends there? Remember, this point, these two that I'm coloring in in green, so A and this point are in phase. I like to think of it as they are both points just before you reach a crest. So this A is just before you reach a crest, it's on the equilibrium position, and this point over here is just before you reach a crest, 
also on the equilibrium position. They're twins. They're on the same point. So that's one wave. Then a second wave would end at F. And you could say, ma'am, how do you know that? We just did that in the previous question. So from A to F would be two full waves, but we're not ending at F. We're ending just before F. So this is going to be, it's not going to be two waves. It's going to be one point something waves. One full wave, and we're going to have a point something, or a fraction. Now, the best way that I can recommend to do this is a full wave would be here. But we don't want to stop at F. We want to stop over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this purple up into pieces. Look at the purple. Look at the purple pink wave. That's one full wave. So where would a half a wave end? If that's one full wave, it goes up to the crest, down to the equilibrium position. From the equilibrium position down to the trough, up to the equilibrium position. I hope you can see that if you had to slice that in half, this would be half a wave. And this piece over here would be another half a wave. But we're not asking for the waves up till D. If we were asking from A to D, it would be one and a half waves. But it's not till D. It's got this little extra piece. So it's actually 1.75 waves or one and three quarter waves. Let me show you another way to think of that last wave because that can be a little bit tricky. Remember, from A to this point is one wave. That would be another full wave. So from A to F is two waves. But we're not ending at F, we're ending at E. So another way to think of it is break this blue wave up into quarters. So that would be one quarter. That would be the second quarter. That would be the third quarter. And that would be the fourth quarter. Okay? So we aren't ending here at F. We want to end at E. How many quarters is that? That's one quarter. That would be another quarter. And that would be another quarter. One quarter, two quarters, three quarters. So one wave, the yellow is one wave. And then up to E would be three quarters of a wave. Can get tricky, but you just have to break it down for yourself. Now this is a nice easy question. Work out the amplitude of this wave. So now remember the definition for amplitude. Amplitude is the maximum disturbance of a particle from its rest or equilibrium position. And I hope you can recall that we go from the equilibrium position, so from that rest position, the middle line, up to the crest or from the equilibrium equilibrium position down to the trough. So let's look at that question that I gave you again. The amplitude would be from here to here or from here to here. But where am I going to get that information from? I need a vertical distance. Look at the diagram and what it gives you. Does it give you any vertical distance? Remember, this five meters over here, that's a horizontal distance. We're not going to use that for amplitude. That's got to do with wavelength. We need to look at vertical distance. I've got this, 50 centimeters. But look at where the 50 centimeters is starting and ending. It's starting at a crest, and it's ending in line with the trough. But remember, we said amplitude is not from crest to trough. It's from crest to equilibrium position, or trough to equilibrium position. So basically, half of the 50 centimeters is the amplitude. It's this distance over here. So what's half of 50 centimeters? 25 centimeters. And just read the question carefully. If they wanted the amplitude in meters, you would have to convert this, but they don't say. So because they give it to me in centimeters, they give me the vertical distance in centimeters, I'm going to quote or state the amplitude in centimeters. And our last question, which can be quite tricky, and this is how they can ask it in the exams, is determine the wavelength of the wave. Now remember this 50 centimeters, this vertical distance, has nothing to do with wavelength. Wavelength is the distance between two successive points in phase. It's a horizontal distance like this, not a vertical distance. So we disregard the 50. Let's just scratch it out so it doesn't confuse us. The only information we have so far with regards to horizontal distance is this 5 meters. But 5 meters is not the wavelength. Why? Because the wavelength is the distance between two successive points in phase. This 5 meters is not the distance between two successive points in phase. 
the 5 meters is the distance between A and H. A and H are definitely not successive points in phase or two successive points in phase. They're not even in phase, by the way. A and F are in phase, but not A and H. Again, if you need a recap of in phase or out of phase, go look at the video, link down below. But how are we going to do this? So 5 meters is from A to H. I need to find out how long or how many meters one wavelength is. So the best way to do it, if they give you something like this. So step one is count the number of waves between the two points that they give you. So in this scenario, they are giving me the distance of five meters. It's starting at A and ending at H. So I'm going to count the number of waves between points A and H. That's step one. Then step two is once you have the number of waves, you take the distance. So the distance in this case is five meters. So I'm going to put in brackets five meters and you divide it by the number of waves that you counted from step one, from step one. I hope that makes sense. OK, so you count the number of waves between A and H. We know that that's five meters. You take the distance, five meters, and you divide it by the number of waves that the diagram gives, okay, that they, that's between those two points, between the five meters. So let's count the number of waves between A and H. A, let's find the next point in phase, it will go like that, that's one wave. Again, because these are points in phase. The next wave, I'm going to use a different color, would start here and would end at F. We answered this in one of the first questions. How many waves are between A and F? And we said two waves. So there it is. The blue wave, the yellow wave, two waves. But I'm not looking till F. I need to go up until H. Now, I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use pinky, purple. How many waves is that? That's definitely not a full wave. Take a look at the other waves. From equilibrium up to the crest, down back to equilibrium. That looks like a half a wave to me. And how do you know? Because look at the blue wave. From equilibrium up to the crest, down to equilibrium. That is half of the blue wave. So that's one half, that's the other half. I hope that makes sense. So between A and H, I have, so I'm going to write here A to H, I have 2.5 waves. So that's step one, count the number of waves between A and H. Then we take the distance between A and H, which is five meters, and we divide it by the number of waves from step one. So five divided by 2.5, and that gets me two meters. And it just so happens that in all these examples that I've done with you on wavelength, the wavelength ends up being two meters. Obviously, it's not always going to be two meters. You obviously just need to look at the question. If you need more on waves, remember to check out the playlist linked in the description box below, and I'll see you in the next video.